This morning, music mogul Sean Diddy Combs facing a slew of allegations, including and sexing in a stunning new civil lawsuit. Girl, they are not letting up on Diddy, honey, because his own family member just came out to expose him. Not only that, but his ex-security guards and his former assistant also exposed him for and pretty much confirmed all the allegations Cassie made against him in her lawsuit. But get this, more women have also slapped him with a new lawsuit accusing him of SAing, and it's also now being reported that some of his victims were also young men, but they are too afraid to speak up because of the stigma around male SA victims. Girl, it looks like this surviving Diddy documentary is going to come sooner than we expected, y'all. Now, I'm sure when Diddy settled his lawsuit, he thought he had sealed this whole thing from blowing up. But boy, oh boy, he was dead wrong. I mean, that's the whole reason why he settled within 24 hours after denying it and even paid Cassie more than double what she was initially asking for. But just a week after he settled, two new victims have also filed an explosive lawsuit against him. The first is a woman named Joy Dickerson Neal, who accused Diddy of assault and battery, intentional infliction of emotional distress, ST, gender motivated violence, and making and disseminating revenge P word. She claims in her lawsuit that Diddy and essayed her back in 1991 when she was still a college student at Syracuse University. Diddy reportedly took her to dinner at a restaurant and slipped a drug her drink when she left to use the restroom. He later took her to a place he was staying to SA her. Video recorded the act and showed the footage to many people. She revealed that she was left with overwhelming feelings of humiliation, embarrassment, violation, and constant apprehension about who had seen the video. The third victim, whose identity is still unknown, said that she and her friend met Diddy and his friend Aaron Hall at a party, and they invited them to an after party at Aaron's apartment where she was taken advantage of by both Diddy and Aaron. She also said that Diddy and Aaron then did the same thing to her friend. And two days after this happened, Diddy was worried that the girl he was with at the time would find out about what happened. So he went to their home and choked her till she passed out. As if this wasn't bad enough, one of Diddy's family members and his former employee, Capricorn Clark, also just came out to spill some major tea about how he used to these young girls and his two ex-security guards Roger Bonds and Gene Deal sent the internet into a frenzy after revealing some new evidence about what Kim went through. Capricorn posted a photo of Kim and revealed that she was an eyewitness to Diddy mistreating Kim and a bunch of other women during the 11 years she worked for him. Black women end up being the sacrifice for the foolery. Last 11 years of my life I had to deal with everyone's nonsensical allegiance to the devil. Pray that ends. I don't think highly of any of you. Can't keep your head down and pretend she's cool no more. Do better. She said in another tweet, they will skin you and wear you, baby girl, then pretend they never wanted the skin. Kim was the only person who didn't switch up. The only one. Dark times. I'm personally very triggered. I pray it's over. I never deserved this. Stop. Now as for Diddy's ex-security guard, Cassie actually name dropped him in her lawsuit while detailing the time Diddy used to physically violate her. The lawsuit read, in the car leaving the club, Mr. Combs Miss Ventura, pushing her into a corner of the vehicle and stomping on her face. Mr. Combs' security staff, Roger Bonds, tried to stop the but was unable to de-escalate the situation. Well, Roger recently confirmed everything Cassie said in the lawsuit when he posted a short statement to his IG stories that read, this is not meant to be threats or snitching or anything like that against Cassie or Diddy or anyone else. This is me telling my truth as I truly remember it for two reasons only. First, because I have four daughters. So on all dudes, my truth as I seen it, saw it, and was involved with it for years. But as I said earlier, it's not just girls. Apparently, boys were not spared from his behavior. In fact, there have been speculations over the years that he groomed Usher and Justin Bieber when they were still minors. See, when Usher was 14, he was handed over to Diddy by L.A. Reid to mentor him because at the time, Diddy had a camp called Puffy Flavor Camp, where he would take young talents and mentor them into becoming superstars, with some of them even signing to his record label, Bad Boy Records. These artists included Biggie Smalls, Lil' Kim, Craig Mack, Faith Evans, and Mary J. Blige. But this wasn't the case for Usher because his relationship with Diddy quickly went from mentorship to Diddy allegedly straight up
him. In fact, Usher himself admitted that when he was staying with Diddy, he saw some pretty wild stuff happening that he felt he was too young to be exposed to. I moved to New York City. And I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. To learn <laughs> Flavor some Camp. Yeah, Flavor Camp. Yeah, that's what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's gonna In pre- the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and like nonstop, right? No, not really. Come I mean, on. but I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, <laughs> and it was, uh, but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. Was- there was even a video where Diddy almost slipped and exposed the times where he and 14 year old Usher would sleep together on his bed. But he quickly caught himself and backtracked. This is my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and I mean, damn, pause, but like, that's how, I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the Frosted Flakes, you know what I'm saying? What's even more interesting is that Kim Porter mentioned something about Diddy grooming Usher and even giving him an STD in her tell-all book before she died. This information was leaked in an email by one of the publishers of the book right after Kim died. The email read, also, some of the things in the book covered Diddy's gay relationships, footage of those encounters, the men he slept with, STDs. STDs, Diddy giving Usher an STD, and the explosive encounter between Diddy and Usher's mom. And just like Usher, Justin was just 15 when he started hanging out with 40-year-old Diddy. There was even a creepy viral video of Diddy promising Justin a Ferrari when he turned 16 and a whole mansion when he turned 18. As soon as you turn 16, you know what I'm saying, I'm gonna let you rock this every time you come yeah, let, yeah, this will be yours. So, oh. when you get 18, you get the house. You okay. get the mansion. Okay, I yeah. get the mansion. Yeah. Some people even said that at the time, Diddy was the one who introduced Justin to substances because he became an addict not too long after they started hanging out. So, as y'all can see, Diddy's essay and restarted decades ago, but people were too afraid to speak on it because of his strong influence in Hollywood. But that was until Cassie came out and exposed him for who he truly is. The worst part about this is that all his alleged victims were still underage. Cassie was 19, Joy Dickerson Neal was still in college, which means she was probably in her late teens to very early 20s. The anonymous third victim who filed a lawsuit against him and her friend are also rumored to have been in their early 20s at the time of the assault. Usher was 14, and Justin was 15. The biggest question now is how many more victims are out there that have been blackmailed and threatened into staying quiet? Girl, I cannot wait for that Surviving Diddy documentary (laughs) to get released because I know there are more victims out there who will finally have the chance to speak their truth after so many years of being silenced. Not only, but according to one of Diddy's family members, his family is very disappointed because they have been asking him if there was any truth to the allegations over the years, but he always denied it, of course. In fact, Jaguar Wright mentioned this a few months ago when she was exposing Diddy. Too much money I, feel, I feel bad for the kids. Mm. Like, don't think that there are moments when I'm speaking honestly about that I pray that his children don't hear it. Because that's still their dad. I know mm. what it's like to have a baby with a As much as I can't stand my ex-husband, I would never want my son to feel bad about either one of us being his parent. You know what I mean? Like, I would never want that. Exactly. But their father is the devil. As per usual, people had a lot to say about this. Like this person who said, this is unfair to all underage males and females taken advantage of by Diddy. I don't understand why Diddy is not in jail. Diddy needs to pay for what he's done to underage children. Someone needs to step in. Another person said, he is a monster. I'm so glad these women are coming forward. They are so damn strong. I'm so beyond sick of these famous men getting away with this solely because of their fame. It makes me sick to think about how much more he has done that we will never even find out about. But now I want to know your thoughts. What do you think about Diddy getting exposed for essaying and grooming young girls and boys? And do you think these are all the victims or are there more that are going to come out in the future? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And don't forget to click here to watch this other messy video.